Swiss to not depend on anything other than our own self-governing consent. Defending and impending doom and no perceived need to concede or repent. Assuming our innocence makes sense to set. Listing of death was only the inevitable end of everything we can never rightly understand or comprehend. We used to fear the unknown, so God made himself known. His own giving the relationship between God and man, giving his life as a ransom for many when he died and descended. And in it would have been a certainty of eternal death was circumvented, making a way for the day when history stops and time suspended. Spending eternity in fellowship that never ends, we see the greatest expression of God's love extended in that moment when those who were once enemies instead became God's friends. And when it's my time to go, go ahead and take me home. I know I'll be with you. I know I'll be with you. When it is my time to go, go ahead. Friendships that suffer from long distances are even worse They get severed from something more severe And he still hasn't wiped away all my tears yet My cheeks get wet every now and then Even when I give my best I know I fall short I get scared when the ball's in my court Focused on my performance Wretched and poor It makes the message more real when I preach it I'm not there yet so I'm reaching Reaching for a goal To stand before my king and be speechless Then, never again but I question if his grace is sufficient to cover my sin Cause death is gone And all the effects of evil and wrong will be conquered when his kingdom comes So this is my hope and my prayer The air that I'll breathe in eternity with lungs that never fail me If it pleases my Lord And only by your grace use my life till it's poured out for your sake Until then I'll remain where you have me With joy when I feel unhappy And a peace that surpasses all my understanding My life is in the hands Everlasting. And when it's my time to go, go ahead and take me home. I know I'll be with you. I know I'll be with you. When it is my time to go, go ahead and take me home. Nowhere that I'd rather go. I wanna be with you. song to us um, when I reflect on the lyrics I realize that chorus that we were just singing is actually a very bold chorus there's a particular line that strikes out to me almost sometimes when I step back away from performing the song I'm like wow that's a statement we stand on stage as three sinful men and sing to a holy God. I know I'll be with you. I know. But the question that starts running through my head is, how can we, standing on this stage, the question that needs to be answered tonight when a song like that is sung is how can we know that we will be with God? How can you come to a concert tonight, stand in the crowd and sing those lyrics with any sense of confidence? God, I know I'll be with you. The God who created our life our very existence, the planet with which we live. He is perfectly 
righteous, holy, and just. And sin cannot exist among him without going unpunished. Without going punished. I don't know, I mixed it up, but anyway. Um, you know my point. Sin cannot be in the presence of God without going punished. And our problem is we were born bucking against God. Saying, not your way, but my way. The song we sung was not, I want to be with you. The song we sung is, I want to do what I want to do. And our understanding of our desperate condition, we were completely ignorant to it. Completely ignorant to the effect of our sin. Completely ignorant to the desperation of our sinful condition. And so, how can we be confident? How can we have any sense of confidence that we will be received and accepted by a holy God with the knowledge of our sin? Standing before Him with all of our deeds, the wickedness in our own hearts, all the thoughts that have went through our minds, completely exposed before Him. How could we have any confidence? We place no confidence in ourselves. We place no confidence in our religious deeds. We place no confidence in some goodness that we see in ourselves when we compare ourselves to other people. Amen. We place no confidence in ourselves. We place all of our confidence, all of our trust, in the finished work of Jesus Christ, yeah. our Lord and Savior on the cross. Amen. Yeah. And our confidence yeah. is rooted in His life and His works. He came down from heaven, fully God, fully man, and lived a life that was pleasing to God. Tempted in every way, yet was without sin. And we so often recall the gospel story and think of Jesus as the good, innocent man who was murdered on the cross. But Jesus said, no one takes my life from me. I freely give it. And so yes, he was murdered. But as he was on the cross, he, according to God's purposes and plan, was taking the punishment for our sin yeah. upon himself. The wrath of God that our lives deserved, that our lives earned, Jesus took that upon himself. And the righteous life that he lived through faith and repentance in his finished work is now credited to us. So when we stand before God, we don't stand hoping to be accepted on the basis of our own deeds, on the basis of our own heart condition, on the basis of the thoughts that have went through our mind. We stand confidently before God that we will be accepted by him through faith in his son and that the righteousness of Christ would be credited to us. This is the gospel, the yeah. good news, and it drives every facet of everything we do as beautiful eulogy. And we find even now, although God has radically changed our hearts by first loving us, stirring our affections for him, that we can also say, I want to be with you without flinching. We desire to be with God, to be done with sin. But as we remain here, we live in response to his love for us. And it compels us. It compels us to sing the type of songs we sing, to love people in the way that we desire to love people, and to make the gospel known. And we don't want to be here in St. Louis. We don't know when we'll be back and just assume 
that the gospel is already known. And so it's proclaimed here tonight that if you're a believer, the gospel would be set before your eyes. That if you've been trying somehow just out of your own reaction to life, earn God's favor once again through your own works, that you could step back and have the cross placed before your gaze and enjoy a relationship with God that has been made perfect through Jesus' work. And you can cast your burdens and your sins and you can truly believe that they have been washed away from you yeah. because of what he has done. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Yeah. What a great hope we have in Christ. What a firm foundation to build our lives on. And if you're in this place and you have heard the gospel before, you've been around Christians, you've been around Christianity, maybe you've heard it mocked on TV, you're mildly familiar with it. But if you're honest with yourself, you've never lived your life in response to it. Right. We proclaim the gospel tonight that by the Spirit of God, men and women in this place might be drawn to God to turn from their sin and turn to Jesus Christ and be saved. We don't want to assume. We don't want to assume so often in our culture the gospel is assumed and we think, let's move on to other things. We already know this, so now let's figure this out. Let's figure out our bills. Let's figure out how we're going to fix this and fix that. But our ability to do any of those things well, when we remove ourselves from the gospel, our efforts fall radically short. Amen. We need the gospel. We need the gospel. And so uh, we rejoice in the gospel tonight. Amen. We rejoice in the opportunity to worship God with you tonight and thank him for our salvation. And we proclaim it here tonight that God's people might be edified and that sinners might come into a right relationship with God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yeah. yeah.